Talking Shit. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talking Shit. I am Sarah Pararia. This is Prince Huda to my right. And of course, all the way from Guelph, Ontario, Johnny Junta joining us with his retro Blue Jays cap. How are you guys? Good. Good week of soccer. We'll say that. Johnny, I can't even talk about it. Yeah. Maybe I, one of the best weeks of all time. That was maybe insane. Maybe one of the best weeks of my life. This was... So we had nine goals across two matches on Tuesday and five goals, uh, sorry, eight goals across two matches yesterday on Wednesday. Mm. This was, this was the pinnacle of what the UCL is. It is. And this is like one. What does that mean for like two? Yeah. The thing is, I hate like now the expectations are to the moon. That's the only problem now. It's like, how do you top this? You can't, you can't top it. I mean, I mean the I man. Think- it doesn't matter City, though. It's still going to be good. Yeah, it's still going to be really good. It's just that Man City Madrid game was insane. Oh. Like I just don't know how you top that. Oh, that was not Bruno. I mean, sorry, Bruno Bernardo Silva second minute free kick Olaso yeah. near side post. Get out yeah. of town. Get out of town. Fifteen uh, minutes for the over to hit in that game. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Like I yeah. was told last week on this show that the first leg is usually a feeling out process. Maybe some slower games, a little bit lower nope. scoring. Not at all. So does that mean the next week is going to be even crazier? Well, that's what Johnny's saying. I don't think it, it, it would be insane for it to be crazier. Like six goals in one match is a lot for yeah. football. I don't know if that'll happen again, but both these teams were re- retaliating. So, I mean, if they got, if we see early goals again, I think it could absolutely happen. Please. It's going to be at the Etihad though. It's going to be tougher for, for Madrid for sure. Um, We obviously saw Okay, you know, let's go through each game and let's talk about him a little bit. Let's dive you in. You guys want to start with the city game, the 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 blockbuster, the marquee matchup. Might yeah, as we can well. Start with that. All right, so we had the over over two and a half. Um, that hit obviously, like Kuda said, in fifteen minutes. Second leg though, going to be at the Etihad. KDB is going to be back. Let's all remember that Kevin De Bruyne, Man City's best player was not playing. He fell ill right before the match. He was throwing up in the locker room. Someone's going on, got a bug. Poor KDB, but they still did well without him. But we might not see Phil Foden play in the next match. He looked like he went off with an injury. That We're still kind of figuring that one out. They have a game over the weekend, too. There's still some time, so keep eyes on that. But, Johnny, just going into this, it's basically nil-nil now, right? Because there's no away goals anymore. When we had away goals, this used to mean so much more. And now it's like, okay, it we have a clean slate. Three. It would have been six three, right? Six three. Away goals count for two. No, no, no. no. How, what, what would the score have been with the away goals? It's, uh, it just it just would have meant that, like, well, no, because Real Madrid could have gone to the Etihad and won one nil. It means that if it ties, that they have to score the same amount of away goals. But yeah. like Real could have won one nil at City and they would have gone through. It's just the the away goals only came into play when the teams drew, because then they would say, well, they scored, you know, three away goals versus these guys only scored two. But like, I feel like as much as it caused me so much pain, sometimes I kind of miss the away goal drama because I think it just added more to the game because now we're basically looking at this game and it's a one-off. There's no, no team has an advantage. I mean, city has the advantage playing at home, but in terms of points and goals, it's nothing. I kind of like the do or die aspect of this game and yeah. not having to worry about uh, away goals and all that type of stuff. I, I think uh, that that game goes to show you how good City is. Like they're one of the best players in the world wasn't even playing mm. and they still drew Real Madrid on the road. So uh, if you look right now in sports interaction, Madrid is my, or, uh, Man City is minus 300 to qualify. Yeah. It's yeah. Just like they know. Um, I, I think they're the best team in the world. I, I might be influenced because I've been just binge watching the Netflix special they have. But Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's just they are insane. Like, Rod- Rodri, uh, like, Holland was kind of a ghost. Like, he didn't really do anything. Yeah, Holland uh, was irrelevant. I'm kind yeah. of surprised. I was surprised, too, because we all had him pegged for a goal last week. I it? don't think I had Did him we? pegged for a goal. I think no I, chance no, I would have. He, he doesn't show up in big games. Oh, no, we had, no, no, we didn't have. We had Foden. You're right. And Foden. He, oh, yeah, and I had Foden. Thank you very much. I would never have gone for Holland in a big game. He always sleeps. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised Pep didn't uh, do a little switcheroo with him and maybe Julian Alvarez or something. I get that they're trying to keep him in there, but he was useless in this game. Julian Alvarez might be like the most one of the most underrated players in football. He's insane. Yeah. yeah. And he's on the bench. Yeah. It's wild. I don't know what they're gonna do, but Holland in big games is terrible. 
absolutely well, he, terrible. He, I don't know if you were seeing, but he also just wasn't making good plays. Like, he has no soccer IQ when I think it was Bernardo Silva had the ball outside of the box. And instead of running towards the box, and Bernardo Silva took a shot, rebounded off the keeper. If Holland had been closer to the keeper near the net, he could have gone for that rebound. Yeah. Instead, he's swinging across the 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 box to go left. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's so obvious in games like this. Like, yeah, we get it. He's scoring a lot of goals. And that's still, it, it's an amazing, amazing record. You know, he he broke last year and all of this. But uh, he's not, he's not like a football player. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a weird, I don't know. I, I guess he can probably show up next week. And the thing about Holland is, is if he really turns it on, he can wake up and just score two. Like, uh, he he is I don't absurd. think he's going to against Madrid. Just, yeah, I don't know if he will against Madrid, but... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he did though. That's the thing. Like he's yeah. such a good, he's such a pure goal scorer where he can just turn it on and have a, like an on game and he'll just, he's unconscious. So um, it, the thing about man city is, is they, they, it's just, it's a super team. Yeah. Like every single player on that team is insane. Uh, it, it, it's wild. Like watching them play against Real Madrid, who probably like, I would consider them even with them, but it just, that game was so back and forth. They give up a goal. They score immediately. It's like, they just turn it on at certain points and no one can stop them. It's wild. Yeah, I agree. What are you guys thinking for this game? Obviously, we we don't have uh, player props out yet at Sports Interaction. We got to see what happens over the weekend. There's obviously league games going on in the weekend. So make sure if you are betting on players, make sure they are they're injured and in the lineups for next week. But Huda, I'll go to you. What are you taking for next uh, next Wednesday's match? Man City at home versus Real Madrid. It's probably a buy low spot on a Holland goal, right? Like he didn't score last week. He's still um, projected to be the top goal scorer in the tournament. He didn't score. Is this a spot where maybe you get better odds on him to score? Obviously, we got to wait till the day before to get that. But I'd like that. Um, I'm just the logic here, right? If a guy is playing super well, has an off game, usually it's a good bounce back spot. But you said he sleeps in big games, so like I wouldn't touch it. You wouldn't with touch KDB, it. I wouldn't, I, with with KDB playing next week, that might be a good bet. Yeah, KDB feeds Holland. Well, so. it also depends if Foden is playing. Yeah, but that would be the biggest thing for me. Okay. If Foden's not playing, someone's gonna have to do something. So then, yeah. for this case, um, somehow both teams to score is only minus one sixty, and the fact that that's not higher, considering how many goals we saw last week and how powerful these offenses are. It's not a great, sexy bet number, but I do like both teams to score. Uh, here's my pick for this one. Johnny, yeah. what are you thinking? I, I like the over three and a half at plus 145. I like plus signs. Uh, two and a half is minus 165. Not even worth betting it. I mean, I, I just like, the, I think there's going to be tons of goals. Every single time this team has played, I believe, except the first leg uh, of two years ago when they faced each other, there, was, there wasn't that many goals. But this is... Every single time they play against each other, there's tons of goals. So I'm just going to take over three and a half and just cons and just stay, think. Uh, I think it's going to stay consistent with what we what we saw last week okay, or this week, sure. I guess technically. But um, three and a half at plus one sixty five. I'm taking that ten times out of ten, especially with how good these teams are at scoring. Nice. Okay. Um, what say you? I'm not going to pick a winner because I still think Real Madrid could do something. But I mean, City at home is just crazy. I, I think it's just better to stay away from this one. But I'm going to go with Real Madrid as the first team to score at plus Ooh. 170. Listen, okay. they have to because they're playing at City's home. The thing is, even if they score first, that's not going to shake, shake City whatsoever. It's happened a lot of times in the Prem. City have gone down 1-0. They come back, they win the game 3-0. Team like City, losing, going down one goal isn't crazy. But I think it means more to Real Madrid to score early and try and shake them. I don't think it'll work. But I think that's the motive there. And it's plus like it's plus 170. Good value. I think it could be the play. I think Madrid are going to come out swinging early because they have no option here. They got nothing to lose. Yeah, uh, I, I don't hate that. I, I would also take first half over one and a half goals at plus 135. Nice. That's what I'd probably be more comfortable taking instead of like the three and a half, which is pretty decent amount of goals um mm. one and a half in the first half would have hit in like eight minutes i believe <laughs> That's yeah, crazy. Uh, Fair enough. would have been the easiest bet ever uh but yeah i i just expect tons of goals here i'd probably even sprinkle rodrigo to score again he's playing insane right now yeah, yeah uh, i had him too yeah he is insane so you can't go wrong with guys like foden rodrigo even um silva bernardo, Silva's bernardo on the silva part. was the best yeah. player for city 
yeah. on the day for sure. I mean, yeah. if KDB's coming into the play though, too, watch out, watch out. I don't know. I hope you're right with it being a, a lot of goals in this game, but something's also telling me, are we going to see like an early, you know, one nil, two nil, and then it's just going to be. I hope not. After like, I hope they not set too. such an expectation last week or this week with all the games. So I would hope this pace of play keeps up, right? Both these teams have such good offensive. I mean, that was that a hockey game score. Have, that was awesome. Six was, goals. Yeah. yeah Great. It was, it was crazy. It was crazy. More of this, more of these kind of games. And I'll be like hooked. <laughs> that that's what keeps me involved in this stuff. Not so. the beautiful sport itself. Just see the well, goals. goals. I like I like goals. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about the other game that was on Tuesday, and that was Bayern oh. Munich and Arsenal. Another really exciting back and forth game. Harry Kane scoring at the Emirates. There was nothing more, you know, certain. I think that was going to happen. Hates Arsenal, biggest rivals. Of course, he's going to score. Uh, scores the pen, you know, and then ends in a draw. A little bit of chaos at the end of the match. Yeah, Johnny. well, not exactly Kudo the cleanest talking. draw. I don't listen. No, I don't know no, enough I, about. No, the I'm sport, on the but... opposite side of that. That wasn't even close to a penalty. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Who did I walk into I don't the studio know today? Who does like the penalty at the end? Now, and I was like, I don't know. Me, I don't know. Let me preface this with: I had Arsenal regular time, right? So obviously you a little bit of betting on Arsenal games. I, I mean, I was pretty shocked, but again, I don't know how. Looked like he hit him in the shin. I don't know the rules fully, but. Johnny, you seem pretty passionate. What 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 happened at the end of this? Well, game? it was pretty obvious. He literally like, if Saka didn't out of it go out of his way to get tripped, like he literally moved his right leg into the other guy's leg. If he tried to get around him, he would have had a clear cut to the net. I don't know why he was trying to draw a foul there. He had the ball on his foot, clear <laughs> cut around the guy. The guy gave gave himself up pretty much, put his leg out, and Saka tried to instigate. A, like a, a penalty shot. I don't know. It was the weirdest sequence I've ever seen. Even in, I, I'm almost positive Arsenal fans would agree with what with with, with what I'm saying here. It wasn't a penalty. I, I think, see. I see both sides on social though. I mean, I guess it feels like oh, social. Yeah, that's a yeah. Good I mean, the the best judge of everything. You know, I the think, internet people of the world are saying some saying it was a dive, some saying it was a penalty. I'm on the side of should have been a penalty, but again, that's my personal betting bias in there. Yeah, I mean, regardless of what happened, I think it was just handled uh, poorly from the ref. The The review was really bad. They should have reviewed it. They should have said mm -hmm. that they were reviewing it. This whole thing about VAR, once again, ruining the match, whether it's a penalty or not, you have to go and you have to review that. Yeah. And you have to let them know that you're reviewing that. All of a sudden, Arteta's just, uh, you know, walking onto the pitch. I realized the final whistle's blown. So it, it was bizarre. Uh, producer Sean coming in hot. What about the handball? Uh, oh. Like the goal kick that hand, like almost like yeah. a handball. Like that, oh. that, to, that to me was more egregious than the actual like trip. Yeah, Gabriel, there. I don't know what he was doing there. That and was even, really weird. I don't know even why the, he touched that. Even the ref was like, "Yeah, it's a kid's mistake," but it's a, it's still a, it's yeah. Still a, it's a still lot a of penalty. people are saying that. I think as like somebody who plays football, I understand exactly. He's passing the ball the way it was the like, yeah. But if you're looking at the rules, of course he had a handball in the in the box. But I don't know. To me. I, I'm I'm kind of okay with it because it wasn't intentional and it wasn't, you know, Harry Kane wasn't even facing like the same way as the play. Like he was ready for the ball to go over his head because it was the keeper was going to take it. But for me, I'm, I, I love like the imperfections of football and we keep trying to fix it. So it's so like, you know, manipulated, like a lot of North American sports. There was nothing about this play that was going to be advantageous for Arsenal by doing that. It was literally a mistake and I'm, I, I'm okay with it. I understand that it, you know, rules were broken, but no one benefited off of it. You know what I mean? If something had happened, okay, we can talk about it. But it was just a little mispass. Like they didn't who they didn't know who was taking. Like this to me is not. It's not that deep. It never fails to amaze me that in any sport, the biggest games always seem to come down to a call or two that could go either way, right? It's like we've talked about that with the NFL. We've talked about that with soccer. We'll probably see that a lot in the NHL and NBA playoffs. It's just. Sports always has that. Yeah, well, could have been, could have been that. So I guess that's just part of part of the game at this point. But yeah, well, as we said, two two at the Emirates, they got to go to Allianz Stadium and Bayern in Munich. Sorry, Johnny, you had originally Arsenal to qualify, and that was plus money before. So if you hammered it, good job to you guys, because now Arsenal to qualify is minus one fifteen. They are the favorites going into Germany, and you know what? 
I still think they are too. I don't think I don't think Arsenal should be tripping about this. Don't let Bayern get in your head. You're a better team. They've shown time and time again when they lose, when they make mistakes, the next game they fix them. They are such a pragmatic team under Mikel Arteta. I'm not tripping about this. I think Arsenal to win. I he, I got match result at Sports Interaction plus 165 mm-hmm. Arsenal. Lock that in. This isn't going into extra time. They're going to get the job done. I don't want to hear it. Johnny, yeah, what do you and- Arsenal didn't even really play that well. Yeah, no. they, they, they kind of played like shit. Um, especially Saliba the, and Gabrielle in the back yeah. were not yeah, great. Gabrielle is terrible. He's really bad. Um, <laughs> at least he was really bad. On He's that been there too. Be- they've been their two best defenders though. Like they've changed games for Arsenal, and both of them were not having a good one. So you think like now they're gonna come in hot? Bayern looked terrible. That like Bayern Harry suck. Kane. Harry Kane with a little PK Merchant goal, uh, which is what he usually <laughs> does. Uh, I love, I love Arsenal here still. I really do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm also like, I just want to see Arsenal have success. I mean, their fans get it pretty bad from opposing fans uh, about like just them not being able to win shit. Uh, I love Arsenal here. I really do. I love Saka. I love Martinelli. Uh, all of them. I, I, I think Arsenal comes through here, especially in Germany. I know it's going to be tough playing there, but uh, I think Arsenal comes through. I really do. All right. Who was the... Arsenal striker that just shot it right at the goalie in like the first few minutes of the game where they were like, he had, I, I forgot who it was. Kai Havertz. Yeah, he just shot it right at him and then uh, Byron goes and scores too. You mentioned this team, people clown on them for not being able to win big games. I can relate to that with my fandom of certain teams. So I'm going to take Arsenal as well. Arsenal to score first plus 100. Seems like their team, they did that in the last game very quickly, yeah. especially the way it ended. I like that plus money. And now you're really just looking for a goal quickly. So I'll take Arsenal. Seems like we're all on the side of Arsenal here, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. But uh, I'll take them to score first at plus 100. Come yeah, I, don't on, hate that. I don't hate that. I, I, Gabriel Jesus looked insane. On like, uh, he was probably one of their best players when he came on. He was the kind subs, of the two subs, Leandro Trossard and yeah. Jesus. My goodness, that 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 changed everything, eh? Yeah. I, I yeah. want them to win so bad. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna come through. I. I think I'd so be, too. I'd be more comfortable taking them to qualify. Just kind of eliminate the extra time bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh, minus one fifteen for Arsenal, but um, I just think this Bayern team is just truly not good. They're gonna lose the league this weekend. Leverkusen's probably gonna clinch it this weekend. Yeah. Um, they're done. Like they're just they're 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 done. So I, I love Arsenal in this spot, especially with the fact that Arsenal's playing more meaningful games. Than uh, Bayern Munich is right now. Like, Bayern yeah, they got to play Aston Villa over the weekend. Yeah. Keep so their like, head in the game. Yeah. So they have, like, they're just the fact they're continuously playing uh, competitive football matches. I think it's going to benefit them. And uh, I think they're going to win uh, at Bayern. All right. Perfect. We're all on the Arsenal bandwagon. Love it. Let's talk about the most exciting game. The one, the only Barcelona beating Paris in Paris. The dogs were awake in this game. Xavi got the boys playing some good football. Johnny, what are you thinking? Barcelona, they they looked a lot better. They Can I just say one thing? Kylian Mbappe, we said, I said this, in fact. Yeah, you did. If... They can shut this. This is the guy who's going to determine this game, right? If Kylian Mbappe wants to win, he's going to win. No shots on target. Ronald Araujo said, stay out of my box. I loved it. It was great. It was great defending from Barca, honestly. Talk to me. He's a ghost. He was a ghost, man. He didn't do shit. Yeah, man. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. looked better. Dembele looked way better than. Uh, yeah. Well, they kind of left Dembele out. Like they gave him a bit more space because they had both Kunde and Araujo on. Uh, Mbappe, they had to kind of pick and choose. Um, in the end, it worked out. I mean, Dembele scored, obviously, but Barcelona ended up winning the game. But again, it's a 1-0 differential. Like It's a one-goal differential. Sorry, obviously winning 3-2. Um, but they were down 2-1 at one point, and they brought it back. Like yeah, it, it, To do that in Paris, though, and PSG fans, they hate Barcelona fans. Like The atmosphere wouldn't have been good for them. Now they got to come back, and they're going to be at home. I'm telling you guys, I've said it from the beginning. I really think Barcelona can get away with it. But again, it's going to be Mbappe. But the fact that they know that they can stop Mbappe is making me think, okay, we can do it again, guys. It, one of the weirdest games. I like. <laughs> I li- So I live bet PSG or draw. I thought the game was going to end up in a draw. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like two, two. And then Barca just came out of nowhere, man, after PSG took the lead back. It was... Uh, it was a sick game. That was probably my. Fi- oh, I guess the Man City Real Madrid game was better for me. But no, that, that so game, good. Yeah, that game was electric. 
Uh, winning on the road is insane. I, I know the Barca coach is gone, gone after this year, right? Yeah, xavi has gone. If they go on a little run here in the Champions League, I mean, he's going to become like the hottest commodity of all time, especially with all the injuries that Barca has and the fact yep. that they're still doing this. But yeah. It's just the cr- I cannot believe how bad PSG played. Like they they just, just didn't look good. They're, when Mbappe wasn't get, uh, getting anything going, you could tell that this team was like, all right, like we're we're, we're, we're kind of done here. Like yeah. they, it was wild. One of the weirdest games I watched. Uh, it was just Bar- shout out Barca, man. I was what a game that was from them. That was insane. Yeah, I think the thing is though is we have to remember Mbappe is still on this team. Luis Enrique, the coach of Paris, was the former coach of Barcelona. This is not over. This is not like it, it's definitely great for Barcelona. And they also played really composed football for the first time in a while. But yeah. this this second this second game, I think it, this one could be the most exciting because I think it's going to be just bananas. Talk yeah, to me, I, there's oh. a lot of value here on uh, PSG to qualify. Mm-hmm, plus, mm-hmm. plus 250. Yeah, I mean, it's a one goal differential. Yeah. Like, I might sprinkle like plus two fifty to qualify is is too good to pass up, especially when you have one of the best players on the world, um, who can literally take over big games. We saw in the World Cup, you got a hat trick. Sure. Uh, if you have one of the best players in the world on the other side, I'm probably gonna bet PSG plus two fifty to qualify. This team is impo- like if Mbappe's if if he's doing what he's doing, I don't see how you stop a guy in a big game like that. Well, we did already, so let's yeah, do it I know, again, just, boys. I, I, I like after watching that guy in the World Cup when he was like 18 and then the, like last year, it's I, yeah, it's hard to bet against that guy. It really it definitely is. is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling the same here. It seems like a buy low spot for PSG. I mean, they were up for a little bit in this game. What, like 10 minutes they had the lead. So I look at this uh, looking like the same bet we had in the last game. PSG first team to score plus 110 already being down um, on the road. Definitely need to make a statement early. Bape's yeah. got to, you know, show us something here. So I like the plus 110 uh, to qualify plus 250. It just seems that seems really, really good. You know what I mean? For one goal difference, plus 250. I like that too. But I'll stick with the PSG to score first at plus 110. And the thing is, uh, this could be Mbappe's last European game. Uh, well, I mean, it is. It's going to be at PSG. I I don't know, man. I, I I'm yeah, seeing the Cinderella some, like, story. No, let's put it to bed. Books, yeah. This guy's not winning anything with PSG. Let's stop this. <laughs> yeah, Go to Real know. Madrid we'll and collect we'll your see. trophies. We'll see. I don't know. It's going to be good. Him going to Real Madrid potentially. Uh, yeah. After, after this year, if he just dominates Barca in a PSG jersey to kind of give a little bit of a hint of what's going to happen in years to come. I don't know. I love storybook endings. So I'm looking forward to seeing like, this is probably the game I'm looking forward to. Ah, maybe Man City, Real Madrid, but, uh, both those games are going to be absolutely electric. Must watch. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to stick with what I've been saying, and I'm going to go Barca regular time plus 110. That's it. Okay. That's it. We're going to keep it Barca. All right, the final game. Atletico Madrid. Hello. 2-0. And then all of a sudden, we got Sebastian Haller, who uh, we love Haller, guys. If you didn't know, he uh, beat cancer last year. Came back to play one AFCON. With Ivory Coast, now he's doing the dance still. Great story, great story for him. But at Letty, man, they looked good at the Wanda, yeah. and they knew. And we talked about this. They, we said they got to win this first game because they got to go up to Dortmund, and that is not an easy place to play. So right now to qualify at Sports Interaction, Borussia Dortmund plus one eighty eight. At Letty is minus two seventy five with the uh, wow. one goal differential there. Let's start with you, Huda. What are you thinking? This game was like, if it was 2-0, and it almost was, but they got that late goal, I think we'd be talking a different story. But again, a one-goal difference isn't that crazy. Yeah, so full accountability. Last week, we all had this one, or we had this one as a tie in the under. So that last-minute goal really kind of sewered us with that under. But yeah, to your point, 2 nothing and versus one nothing is a very, or nil, excuse me, learning the language. Very different scenario. Uh, I might take the actually I'm looking at the under here in this game under two and a half plus 115. We were pretty close to it last time. Yeah, Um, I can see a bit more of a defensive front from Atletico. So I'm going to go under two and a half goals plus 115. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, Atleti are going to be parking the bus for sure. They got to Johnny. What are you thinking? You like the under here? I love the value of taking teams down one. Uh, (laughs) It's it's. I, I, you can make money off of it at the end of the sure. day. Like, yeah, like 
I wanted to. I, I think Dortmund qualifies. I really do. Ooh. I, think, I think I think Dortmund qualifies. You I know, really this think- game out of all the games, I was just gonna say match result for to be Atleti is plus one ninety five, and I think Atletico are gonna get the job done. But this is the one game where I really think that we could see pens. I oh, really please, think this please. is the one. So I, that's why, and that's why, if you go at Letty to qualify as minus two seventy five, all of a sudden it's just completely upside down. Yeah, but yeah, this bad, one, bad. I, I don't know, man. This one has PKs written all over it, and then Simeone's men come out on top. So you're back in Dorman though, Johnny. Yeah, yeah to qualify I them because I'm in the same thought process as you. Like value wise, I'd rather take a plus one eighty five or plus one eighty eight, and then if it goes to penalties, it's just all up for chance. Like. Because once they get the penalties, they both will go to minus one ten. Usually, that's usually what happens. Like, yeah, it's just pick them. Yeah. Uh, so you're getting a better number for a side that you think is going to win. And I, I like this Dortmund side, man. I really do. Uh, they're not going to win the league because Leverkusen's just the greatest fucking team on the planet in Europe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think this is going to be. This is this has like you said, extra time written all over it. It really does. I, I don't see how this doesn't go to extra time. Yeah, I completely agree. I'm going to uh, back Huda's bet here and keep the under, though, because okay. I think that will take us right into extra time. All right, guys. So let's just go over it really quick. So we started off Real Madrid and Man City. You guys are hitting the over. And what did we say? I said both teams to score, but not both much value there. Score. Yeah, I like that. It but was we, over first half. Yeah. One and, and a half. And we like we like the goals in this one for Arsenal and Bayern Munich. We are all on the Arsenal train to mm-hmm. qualify. Barcelona, PSG, Johnny is backing PSG, Huda is backing PSG, and I'm backing Barca. And then finally, Dortmund at Letty. Uh, Hoods and I have the uh, under here, and Johnny's going for Dortmund. Next time we talk about this, guys, we will know who's going to be in the semifinal and who's playing who. I can't wait. It's only getting better. No one talked to me on Tuesday or Wednesday because I'm watching the Champions League. All right. Oh, yeah. If we see a bunch of one nothing, one one games. I'm gonna be very upset based uh, on what was given to me last week. As long week. as Barca wins, I don't care. I'll be could quite imagine, honest. Like, could you imagine Arsenal, Man City in the semifinals? Like, that would just be electric. You know, it could be Atletico versus Barca and Arsenal and Man City, meaning that Spain and England are just running the world. Oh, but- that would be sick too. I uh, I'm just praying we get Arsenal, Man City at a certain point. Like just two teams that have just been going neck and neck for the past literally two. I mean, years. I really think it could be right because oh, I really don't want to see Bayern go to the, like get. Them. I don't want to see that. I really don't want to see Bayern yeah. go any further. Like this team has been bad all season. They don't deserve it. They're playing miserable football. Give it to Arsenal, man. This this team's great. Can I, you explain the Arsenal Man City rivalry in another sports terms? It's not it's not what you think it is. Like, it's only big right now because they're fighting for the title, but it's not, excuse me, it's not like um like uh, the biggest rivalry in the prem is Man United Liverpool, but then you also have the Manchester derby because they're two teams yeah, from the same. same. Or you have Battle Arsenal's of- biggest rival is Tottenham because they're both London teams and they hate each other. But the Arsenal City is more of like a it's a newer rivalry. Niners be- Chiefs. Niners oh, Chiefs. Oh, okay. okay is, that's is that big. a newer rivalry? Wow. Yeah, 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 last few years. Yeah, okay, that's years. what it is because okay. they're both competing for the title. But it's not like a deep, like, this is football heritage. Like, it's not like that. But um, the thing yeah, is, is the, the coach of... I like that. There's also, like, I don't know. There, there's so many, like, players intertwined there as well. And, like, the coach of Arsenal was, like, the apprentice under the... Um, under the Man City coach, okay. like he trained so under some him. They're both storylines and stuff. Also, there. I like all that. these coaches being former Barca players in the Champions League: Xavi, Luis Enrique, Arteta, Guardiola. Yeah. Fucking greatness! Fucking yeah. greatness! All right, guys, that's enough soccer. Let's talk about who does favorite sport. We got to talk about hockey. Football. Oh, hockey. Football. <laughs> you said for favorite sport. No, we were just talking about Whipper. football. Now we're yes. talking about hockey. So we got playoffs coming up. I know. Are you? Are you? How are you mentally preparing? I'm excited. Like the last few weeks of the season are pretty mundane. Mm -hmm. I will say Matthew's four goals away at the time of recording from 70. He was, I think, 10 away at the time we recorded last week. So big week. Love that. Um, I'm excited. I'm very nervous. We talked about last week how I'd like the Leafs to play the Bruins. Johnny agreed. Fortunately, the Leafs will not be playing the Bruins. They will be playing the Panthers. Yeah. Um. I mean, that could be a better matchup. It will be exciting. I was looking at ticket prices. I probably will not be there. I'll be outside. But, you know, if someone's listening to the show and is a big Leafs fan and wants to take me to the game, I'd love to go. But I'm very excited. 
very nervous, but it seems to be that similar feeling around this time of year always. Okay, yeah. Let, let's sorry. <laughs> let's talk about um, playoff ticket prices because you brought that up. We'll talk about some other stuff too. Oh. But um, this ain't no joke, guys. Like this is some this is some serious cash that you have to drop to go see the Leafs play at Scotiabank Arena. Johnny, what's the maximum you would pay to go see the Leafs in a playoff game? Five hundred dollars, maybe. I I honestly couldn't care. I I, I no, like, me neither. Yeah, I wouldn't even pay that. Yeah. So right now, standing room only. The minimum ticket where you're just standing, obstructed view is two hundred and twenty-two dollars. So you don't even have a seat. You're just standing at the top of the building, you like six hundred level. Yeah, yeah, yeah two twenty-two so to like over three. Jesus. The most expensive ticket. Um. Per curiosity.com, um, a whopping $2,677 for center ice tickets. Suck. Like, you're not going to get the best Leafs fans in the building. You're going to get the people that can <gasps> oh afford the God. tickets. We have this scenario every year. The real fans are the ones outside the building yeah. in the, uh, what, 10 degree weather, freezing their asses off, standing, no food, no bathroom. You know, they're just watching the game because they love their team and they can't get in the building. They should bring that group of fans inside because that's what the players need. You saw a few weeks ago when Matthews hit 60 in Buffalo, that crowd went nuts. But if that happened in Toronto, it would be even quieter. So I'll stand on my soapbox till the end of time. Leafs tickets are pricing out real fans from the building and playoffs. It's going to be the same because we're still two weeks out. So these prices will go up. Let's say the Leafs make it to the next round. They'll go up even more and they'll continue to go up. And so I'd love to go to a game, but I, I can't justify spending fucking $3,000 on a hockey ticket. Stupid. We talked about this with Celine. I'm pretty yeah. sure because I think I said to them, Johnny, I was like, isn't this like bad for the actual team? Because you're not getting your fans in there. Like it affects the arena too. Mm -hmm. You're not getting like the people that are going to make noise. You got like, you know, Fred and, Joe in their suits, <laughs> hanging out, schmoozing. Red? Yeah, I don't know whoever it may be, but like this is so wild. Like I, I, I don't know what to tell you guys, but I'll tell you this much: tickets to see Chile and Argentina, meaning Lionel Messi, were freaking cheaper than this. And that's crazy to think about. Like that's an absolute joke because who the hell would go see the Leafs over Messi? Just well, what's the general? most you would spend on Argentina tickets? Not a lot, not like that much. Right. I wouldn't spend a lot to go to games because I spent 120 euros to go see Messi versus Ronaldo in Barcelona to, uh, at El Clasico. That's true. Which is less than two hundred dollars. If that's that's my that's my range. If I have done that, this is insane. What are you seeing? This is not the two best teams in the world with the best players. Like it's it's insulting. If I were a Leafs fan, and I'm not, I'm not a hockey fan, so I can't speak on this. But if I was, you know how insulted I would be. This is. It's Go ridiculous. Call, call your team. Call your fucking team because this is a joke. You guys are getting mistreated. No, I'm serious. Like, no, I, I, no wonder 100%. everyone fucking hates Toronto because of this shit. It's embarrassing. Collect it is yourself. wild. It no. is wild. It's absolutely absurd. I. It really just, it, it's greedy tickets. It's gross. It's greed. Yeah. That's yeah. the perfect word, greed. Because yeah. they know people will still buy them no matter how expensive they are. Yeah. And it's just, it's so sad. I went to the Leafs devil's game a few weeks ago it was a tuesday it was quiet in there there's a lot of suits a lot of empty seats for most I mean, of the first period not, and it was quiet they're sold out to you know whoever is buying the seats but they're not even going to games and stuff like it's a shame it's a shame and it's a shame for the players too because i think they could really benefit off having proper fans there yeah. who are going to make the noise who are going to support and going to cheer and like if they're in the playoffs everything means more like i don't know maybe. it actually is a good thing that the leafs final home game is saturday because if Matthews was to hit 70, it'd be next week in either Florida or Tampa. Where yeah. There's always a shit ton of Leaf fans. So you know it's going to be a huge pop when he hits that number. Not if. I think we're at a when now. Because if he yeah. hits it Saturday in Toronto, yeah, people will it will be happy. But it seems like the reaction on road games, it's, it's a really a tough look for this team mm -hmm. that the road crowds are doing better than the home crowds. And, you know, maybe that's what's been costing us in the playoffs. But the only justification, like if the Leafs make the Stanley Cup final, yeah, once in a lifetime, let's splurge, let's break the bank. But for the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, like you can't you can't justify these prices. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I agree.
Yeah, it's uh, it's just dumb. I it, it, and there's nothing that's ever gonna happen about it. Unfortunately, it's just mm-hmm. always gonna be like this. Um, but yeah, you you don't have the real fans in the stadium that want to be there. What's all. the most you'd spend on Blue Jays tickets, hypothetically, like World Series? Johnny's like, I go for free now, dog. I went. Yeah, nothing. but but you back in the uh, day, like I'd spend a couple. I'd probably like, I'd probably spend a grand. Holy like shit! I, like the World Series not, is like that. it's something yeah. that's never happened in my life, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, and I don't know if it'll ever happen again. Like, it hasn't happened in what thirty years now. Thirty years, yeah. Right? Like, 30 you, you never know when it's going to be the last one for a while. So, I would definitely do that. A thousand, fifteen hundred, probably. I don't remember when the Raptors were in the finals. Were people complaining about how crazy ticket prices were then? Or I truly don't even remember. I don't even remember. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I just know. Uh, I think they were, but I don't think they were as like egregious as. Loose. I think it was more justifiable because it's like the Warriors. You got all these studs on the team. Raptors got Kawhi. It's like first time. But yeah, for the first round of the playoffs, like come on, who? I say who's going to spend the money on these tickets? There are people. Yeah, there's other you they will they will come. You build it, they will there will be people there, no matter yeah. what. Um, but yeah, I don't remember the Raptors ones. Yeah, I don't. I don't I don't remember this much pushback. And then the Leafs, it's like it's every year, it's like even regular season. So shout out the Blue Jays for affordable fun tickets. There you go. Yeah, you love shout to see out it. the blue birds. Yeah, Leafs on the front. <laughs> All right. Well, Leafs are you know going to playoffs, obviously. There's a bunch of Canadian teams there. We got we got Edmonton, we got mm-hmm. Toronto, we got Van, we got Winnipeg, yep. and we got, there's one more. No, oh, just the four. There's four. Okay, good. Look at that. I know these things. Um, Johnny, who's going the furthest out of these four Canadian teams? Winnipeg struggled a pretty decent amount last couple of weeks. The Leafs, I'm not, like, I'm not a Leaf fan, so I could say this. They have looked the best, like, in Canada in the past three or four mm-hmm. weeks. They have easily looked the best. Samsonov is like twenty three and one in his last like twenty four starts. He's like just the best goalie on the planet. All of a sudden, since they uh, sent him down, and he came back up. Uh, I truly do think this Leafs team has what it takes. I mean, it's not a homer take. It's just I- I'm not a Leaf fan. Like I said, it's uh, I like their grittiness. I love the addition of Tyler Bertuzzi, who's looked really good. Max Domi, who's looked really good. Uh, the def- their decor looks pretty good too. Joel Edmondson, electric. <laughs> uh, I think this team. I, th- I think this team has what it takes to at least. They're gonna win like two rounds at least. Hopefully they win. I don't know, but I think this team. Wow, is way you're different. making please, Prince Huda's please. day over here. I think this team is way different than what it has been in previous years, and I know everyone says that, but I love the Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi additions. I really do. So you think they're gonna they're gonna beat Florida in the first round? Yeah, I think they can. I, Florida's really good. Don't get me wrong, but this mm. Leaf team is just gritty. They're just gritty, uh, and I, I don't know. It's it's, it's going to depend on the first couple of games. Obviously, the tone they set and if the big dogs can score like Matthews. Mm-hmm. But I truly do think this team has what it takes to not easily, but get through the first couple of rounds for sure. Wow. Okay, Huda, how do you like that? I love it, but <laughs> I just I can't. I don't want to, as you, you to coin a term from Johnny old takes exposed on the show. I agree with everything he said, but I'll pick the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. I think the way they started this season as one of the worst teams in the NHL, they fired their coach. People thought this was it. McDavid's gone. This team's washed. They've turned it around incredibly. They're second in their division right now. As a recording, they're projected to play the Kings in the first round who they beat last year. So I think that they can beat them again. Last year, unfortunately, they got bounced by Vegas, who ended up winning the cup. And so I can see the Oilers making a run in the Western Conference. I mean, they got the heavy hitters at the top of the offense. You got McDavid, you got Dreisaitl. I mean, Hyman, 50 goals. Nobody saw yeah. that coming. Stuart Skinner's been playing a lot better this year than last year and recently has been pretty hot. So I wouldn't be surprised to see the Oilers making a deep run in the playoffs this year. As much as I love the Leafs, I don't want to, Say it. I'll just be happy when it happens. But I do think the Oilers will be the top Canadian team in the playoffs this year. The goaltending such a question mark with that team. Yeah, uh, it's been so good is, recently. But yeah, like you're so right. Is, uh, so is the decor. Uh, Darnell Nurse. I mean, they just beat the shit out of the Vegas Golden Knights this week. So, yeah, I don't know. It's anything could happen in the playoffs. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be fun. We're a couple of weeks away. I think a week and a bit away from NHL playoffs. Um I can't wait for. I, I, I do enjoy watching. Hockey playoffs are like even if, if 
if if I, I you know I've started watching Champions League, I strongly encourage if you're gonna watch hockey to start, it would be NHL playoffs. Yeah, they have. They I've gone to parties every freaking spring, and they take over the parties. I want to play oh, music. You're not amazing. allowed to play the aux chord. Shut the fuck up. Go watch the game somewhere else. I'm going to a party. I don't want to watch this. I actually hate it because everyone, no matter where I go, I can't avoid it. That's who I am. That's well, how much I don't like hockey. And it, okay, this happened last year. We were at a bar. My friends rented out the whole bar. So we got, we want to like, we want to dance. We want to drink. There's hundred people there. It's great. The entire dance floor is filled with seats and there's a projector to watch the hockey game. <laughs> I'm sorry. Leave. Guess, what, guess what happened? Let me tell you, guess what happened? They fucking lost because they're the Leafs. I could have told you before, but you can't take up a dance floor at a bar. <laughs> like stay home. It's playoffs. I'm no. all for it. If you're at like a regular bar and you sit down, but like this bar was rented out for a party. And I was like, you, they, you ruined the party because there's no music. A party, a party without music obviously is shit. That's so, like, fair. I don't know. To me, I hate this because no matter what I do, social outings now revolve around the Leafs. And I'm just like, oh, couldn't be oh. me. Don't care. The city's alive. It's, it's, it's the best time. I feel like, Remember, no. if the Leafs could get a deep run, I think it would be good for everyone, right? Sports bars, clubs, like you said, everyone's making money. Everyone's happy. And the fact that there's four Canadian teams this year means if one or two get bounced and two keep going, that buzz is going to continue, which is awesome. To mm -hmm. your point about the playoffs, I remember last year, uh, my family had like a, a family function at someone's house. And, you know, we did like some stuff, but then... But when the game started, it was like everyone was locked into the screen and it was like, OK, party's pretty much over. Everyone's just going to be watching the game. Everyone can do their own thing if you're not watching. And it was when the Leafs won an OT and Tavares scored that goal. And one yeah. of the best nights probably over the last five years, dare I say my life, it was incredible. So completely disagree. Playoffs are the best time of year. That sounds Have like an awesome, that sounds, sounds like an awesome Cup club. Final? That like sounds like an awesome club. Would you. OK, so what if you're at a club in the World Cup finals on the projector? Is that so a do not. OK. Do not fucking compare the World Cup final to a fucking first round Stanley Cup, whatever the a hell. A sporting like event that you're passionate that about. The most that's what I'm trying to say. thing and ignorant thing you could have ever done. At Sports Interaction, guys, we have a Canadian team winning the Stanley Cup at plus 290. You're talking about now there's four of them. Chances are better. So is if that a, a, a dream scenario would be Oilers versus Leafs in the finals. That would be good for it's a lock then. But I don't know what if that you would happen. Hate the Oilers, though, when you lose to them. Like, wouldn't that I be like? I don't know if we lose to them though. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know if we lose to them though. I don't. I don't. Playoffs are so unpredictable. To Johnny's yeah. point, last year the Bruins, who won the President's Trophy as the best team in the regular season, got bounced in the first round by the team that made the playoffs on the last day of the season. So anything can happen. You never know. But stranger things have happened. I mean, Florida went all the way last year. So who's to say the Leafs can't do it? Uh, I certainly hey. won't say either way. <laughs> Sarah says, you know, but that's fair. I think. That's what makes the NHL playoffs so special. Anything can happen. So very excited. Shout out Canada and uh, go, go Leafs go. We'll, we'll, that's what I'll end it up. I don't know what else to say. Okay, Johnny, talk to us a little bit about Jackson Holiday. Getting oh, yeah. The call up. Yeah. Uh, one of the best, pro one of the most, probably one of the most hype prospects, maybe since like Vladdy uh, mm. in terms of guys that like must watch TV, insane numbers. I mean, this guy is, 20 years old i want to say he's married already crazy uh, stuff he's already like he's just i mean he he's a nepo baby his dad played in the 20 show years for, old yeah for a very long time but uh is he yeah. matt holiday's kid yeah it's matt holiday oh, look at that um yeah so he's incredible man i mean he's playing tonight i'm looking forward to watching him tonight against the red Sox. uh his numbers in the minors are insane absolutely insane so i'm looking forward to seeing what he can do at the big league level during the regular season because he was good in the spring, but Jackson Holiday's special, man. I, I, I uh, it sucks he's going to be in the division with the Jays, yeah. But, uh, I am looking forward to seeing what Jackson Holiday does, uh, at the big league level, not against the Toronto Blue Jays, obviously. How old is he? 20. Holy, shit. yeah, that's nuts. That's is he like. Like you mentioned the Vladdy comparisons. Is that his ceiling or do you think he can go past that? Is well, I mean, he's a different player, like really good defensively. Um, it's just tons of stuff. He is uh it's he bat to ball, power, really good defensively, fast. It's he's literally everything. Vladdy's more just a power guy. Okay. Also up. Yeah. the second most uh when you're describing his accolades, the second thing you said was he's married. Is that an asset? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm just saying it's like he's such a mature kid. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. 
Is yeah. that what that means? <laughs> like he's he's so focused, he's already kind of okay. I just, it's wild. He's twenty years old and he's married. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> I just thought he's like, yeah, he's an elite prospect. He's married. I was like, oh no, wait, no, no it's crazy because he's so young though. Because I feel like baseball players peak a lot later in life, and this guy is twenty and fucking getting called up like that's insane because i feel like he can i feel like there's still space for him to grow yeah I, but he'll do it in the big leagues now yeah but that's what yeah. i mean like incredible yeah, yeah he and looks he, like a little kid in the face it's crazy he, he so looks young, man. Yeah. He has a brother he has a younger brother who's like really good as well It'll probably be like a top God, how does that happen yeah. yeah the families that produce more than one pro athletes are insane yeah like, they're wild, wild the jones is like wild. how they're wild. It's truly, it's it's truly unbelievable how, um, how good that entire family is at baseball. Like they have a cousin as well that plays D one. Like they're insane. Of course, they're all just of so die hard. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. insane. Oh, it's uh, you know, finding these athletes is generational, once in a lifetime, and then mm-hmm. families are able to produce two or three of them. It's yeah. It's, there's something in the, I don't know what's like. It's got to be their genes, obviously, right? But yeah, you just tip your crazy. cap, man. You just tip your cap. That's all you can do. Okay. So do you think by like this this a call up to see how he'll do for a few games send him back or is no, this no, like he'll he's be, ready to roll? He'll be up here until he's not up here. Like he'll be up here he'll until be up he here loses until... his spot. Okay. Like till he loses his spot. He'll he'll be up here forever, probably. <laughs> like this is done. He's so good, man. It's it's absolutely it's absurd how good he is. Do the well, Jays play the Orioles in the next uh, like probably a, a, a pretty decent amount of time. They don't play on May thirteenth is the opening yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Like there you go. Back. But it's in Baltimore. Uh, we got uh, the Rockies this weekend at home, Johnny. Yep. Big one go. this weekend. Beat up, beat up on the dog shit teams. There you go. Like it. The dog shit teams. All right, guys. We got some boxing, too, happening. I'm actually surprised. We'll get into this. But we got Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Who don't talk to me about this a little bit and what you're looking forward to. I'm going to be honest. I didn't even realize that was next weekend until I was kind of doing the rounds of what's going so on in the world. So it's next weekend. Yeah. yeah. So, not, so we don't have to talk about it today because we have UFC 300. No, no, no. No, he's right. He's right. He uh, This will drop next week, which is before. Yeah, that's what yeah. they just said. Whoa. That's what they just said. Whoop. Edit. Whoop. Okay. No, it's, that doesn't yeah. need to be edited. It's a human yes. mistake. I'm okay with it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's next weekend. Like There was a lot of hype around this fight a while ago, and then Garcia yeah. kind of lost his mind with some of the stuff he was saying and, and tweeting, and people really thought that I was a way to pull out of the fight. Um. This isn't really a fight that I'd even look to bet on, just given the odds. It's like minus 1,100 for Haney. I think Garcia has a bit of a better chance. I mean, the way he's talking, he's a lot more confident. But there is a built-in rivalry here. Apparently, when they were on amateur boxers, they fought six times, tied 3-3. So it is interesting to see that the pro boxing fights don't get as much hype as the gimmick boxing fights, like your KSIs, your Logan Pauls, your Jake Pauls of the world. Yeah, I have nothing for this. I don't... I just... I see Ryan Garcia all over my timeline posting weird shit. That's the only yeah. thing I know about him. Yeah, more of just uh, I just I was just very fascinated just to realize that it was next week and the fact yeah. that there hasn't really been much buildup versus yeah. like Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson is like but something people won't stop money, talking right? about. Like they yeah. know they got to blow it up because that's how they got like it's it's that's how they make their money. It's all this fame and crap. Fair yeah. enough. Rumor watching? rumor mill is uh, Conor McGregor may be fighting in the oh months. Jesus great good for him. As uh, by the time this show drops next week, this could already be public news. So, Good for him. <laughs> we'll we'll dive into that next week, or maybe not. I don't think I Johnny don't and I could give more. Uh, uh, I yeah, we'll see. I used to be a McGregor guy. He, just, yeah, I mean, did you watch so the doc active. on Netflix? He's so inactive. No, it was a pretty I, I good doc on I Netflix. I never liked him. Yeah, he's um, just too inactive. Yeah, yeah. There is UFC this week, and are you watching it at all? Oh You're yeah, watch I'll it. be at. Oh, we these... actually got a locker room, right? We'll Sean's have a locker room. Let's go. Sports interaction watch party in Milton for our special guests. I'll be there. Oh, yeah. I heard Stevie's going to go to Milton. Shout out Stevie. <laughs> Milton? But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Where, where is, guys? I have a question. Where is Milton? Because I, 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 I grew up there. Deep. Oh, Johnny Deep. from Milton, not Johnny from Guelph? Yeah, I've lived there from the age of like one to like 22. Oh, my oh, gosh. Right okay, yeah. let me. I'm actually Googling it. It's right beside Mississauga. Right beside Yeah, it's, it's pretty close to Mississauga. This one's at uh, Derry and Ontario Street. It's like north of Oakville, Mississauga. You guys are, it's so yeah. much further out there. No, Mississauga's like it's on the border of Mil- Milton, Mississauga. That, that, that's where we moved from. Oh, no, guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's closer than it, than it appears on yeah. maps. That's for sure. That's scary. Shout out Milton. Shout out Milton. I'll be there. Soon I'll be there this weekend. Yes. 
All right, guys. Well, there's literally so much going on in the world of sports. So we'll be back again next week doing it all again. We'll be talking about how Barcelona are going to the semi freaking finals of the Champions League. I don't know. Johnny will be telling us about uh, Blue Jays and Yankees, maybe. Yep. We'll talk some, uh, I don't know. We'll talk about NHL more. Probably the playoffs are going to be closer. Who is going to be freaking out? It's getting good, guys. It's getting good. For sure, there is no lack of sports conversations right now. So enjoy your weekends and all the sports you will be watching. And we'll be back again. Same time, same place. Talking shit.